Hi everybody. Did you catch my live stream earlier today? <clears throat> Only about three people did. And I can't show it to you because YouTube did not save it. After 40 minutes, uh, my 40 minute stream, I discovered that the stream had turned off after about six minutes. So I didn't capture anything and I did a live stream for three people that lasted for six minutes. So this is my attempt to do another live stream uh, here at home on my own computer. Today we're going to be talking about the scientific node. This comes, this information comes from Margaret Carone, Carone on the Ashes of Creation blog. So the blog starts out with this beautiful picture of a encampment level one node. As you can see here, there's a little tent, a little wagon, campfire, some materials, a little uh, fruit wagon or something. So when you first walk around this landscape, you're going to come upon one of these encampments. It will be like a NPC standing here or at the campfire, maybe another one over here selling turnips. And they're going to talk to you and they're going to say stuff like, um, Hey stranger, would you like to buy some bananas? Or have you got anything to trade? Or, um, you know, do you have any weird things to sell? Depending on what they tell you, that's going to give you a clue as to what kind of node it is. So t scientific nodes are going to ask for scientific things like arsenic or, you know, some kind of magic powder, some kind of strange mushroom, things like that. You might also get a clue as to what kind of node it is by looking at the sigil on the side of the tent. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. This little caravan, it looks like your own personal wagon, but maybe you can attach it to a caravan. And maybe that's how caravans work, we don't know. This looks like a little fruit stand or something. Maybe you can sell potions. Maybe you'll have one of these. This encampment will be populated by NPCs, non-playable characters. So let's start reading and see what the blog says. Every node type is different. And in this article, we're going over what exactly makes the scientific node type special. In comparison to the others, if you missed our previous article in this series, we highly recommend you check out Know Your Nodes, Advance and Destroy. As a disclaimer, we want to note that our game is still in development, so all design decisions are subject to change during our alphas and betas. With that in mind, this series will provide you details on the current design plan for nodes. So this first image here looks like some kind of uh, study hall. Or a cafeteria maybe I can imagine a professor or someone standing here giving a lecture maybe another person over here lecturing on something different and yeah but let's read on and see what this actually is it's not a cafeteria what makes scientific nodes different from other nodes a great Varian philosopher bleh, a great Varan philosopher once stated, To know the gods, we must first know ourselves. Science is a looking glass. On Vera, the essence flows through the fabric of the world. Each location focuses the essence in different ways, allowing for interactions with the essence that yield a variety of results. Nodes exist near these locations in the world that focus the essence, and one such focus is that of the scientific node type. Those who seek knowledge, technological advancement, and want to understand why the world is the way it is, will find the scientific node is for them. In these nodes, you'll find sprawling quest, quest lines and rewards for crafters, gatherers, and those who seek the highest reaches of artisan knowledge. Upon first glance at a scientific node, players will find scholars on an expedition out in the wilderness, requesting aid in finding a chemical or natural reagents, 
If you should choose to help them, you may progress the scientific node beyond a lowly expedition into something magnificent. So the NPCs that you meet up here will be scholars. And maybe they're looking for some kind of fungus or magnetic compass readings or something. Something scientific. Specialization in artisanship and construction mechanics are granted through many of the NPC merchants and through the ancillary quest points within the specific within the scientific node type. This will unlock abilities with many professions and allow specialization in the gathering, processing, and crafting aspects of the artisan system. <coughs> okay. So as you help these people that you find in the in the nowhere you're going to help them and by helping them you're going to advance the encampment to a level two uh, encampment I think or a camp I think it's just called a camp level three is a village village stage and let's look at that look at this beautiful gorgeous photograph screen capture these look like folders or books or something parchments maps little reading tables where you can sit and study there's a statue here that's nice here's upstairs you can come up here these are where the books that are not as popular are right up there this is a pretty nice building it looks um elfish to me i can't remember the name of the Elf people, Elysians, I don't know. But each of these nodes will have different architecture depending on what kind of race created it. Unique building. Each node type has each a unique building associated with it that can be activated, can be activated at, level at level 3, the village, the village stage. stage of a node's development. Uh, in the don't worry, I'm not going to read the entire blog to you. I will, but it gets a lot more interesting right after this part. And professions so, will interact Jerry. with the scientific node. And at in every the scientific node three, type, this unique building is a building of knowledge and learning. Along with tools, Many quest lines, the professions will intersect with the scientific node. And at every stage beyond the three, three below it offers some prints for buildings, all of the unique along with tools systems and the agents for gathering within and crafting. The unique building at outlined below are some, but not no. all, of the unique gameplay systems that become activated within the unique building at different stages of the scientific node. Note: Some utilities can only be used by citizens of the scientific node, which will be revealed in our alpha and beta tests. Then we have another beautiful picture, some urns, uh, some kind of hallway, not sure what this is, big wide open space, there's a statue, tables, some banners, that's my cockatiel in the background singing. Okay, now let's get to the good part, the library. So it was not a cafeteria, it's actually a library. Level 3, the village stage. At the village stage, the scientific node's unique building is the library, which records the history of the server. Players can use the library to access information, including, but not limited to, the following. History of narrative events and when they occurred. Okay, you're going to get the history of the server. So, anytime you accomplish something, it's going to be written down here. If you're the first person to catch a fish, or discover a diamond mine, or kill a monster, the first person to accidentally fall off a cliff or something, <laughs> it's going to be in here. History of narrative events and where they occurred. This is like Erlor. Remember Erlor? He went up north and he never came back down. What year did that happen? And you're going to get more of that, of that kind of lore. Remember uh, Delia's mom got squashed? What year did that happen? And what, what happened after that? We never found out what happened after that. That kind of stuff is going to be in here. Locations of 
and last known quantities of gatherable resources. So let's say somebody found a bunch of pineapples on an island. It's going to say a bunch of pineapples. Maybe 750 pounds of pineapples were found on Nukia. Nikua Island or something like that. Um, if somebody found some emeralds in the Emerald Mountains, it'll say that. This is going to give you a good clue where you could find and gather resources. That's very valuable. Locations and inhabitants of new dungeons or POIs, points of interest that have spawned, that have spawned. So anytime a new city uh, is created, it's going to come up in here. Locations and inhabitants of new dungeons. Who would be in the dungeon? Monsters, maybe? Monster bosses? Points of interest, like uh, Peter's head. You know that big head that sticks out of the ground? I named it Peter's head. I don't know what it's really called. But if people start excavating it, that might be in here. If people find some kind of ancient relics near it, it might show up in here. Runic power stones for armor. This is a big one. I did not know about this. I never heard about this. Do you remember when they had um, the armor? They showed us new armor and they had Eldritch touch Regalia. And it was glowy. It was glowing, kind of purplish. The thing that makes the armor glow is the runic power stone. That's what's making it glow. That's what's giving it extra power. So it might be steel armor, and that's good. But if it's glowy armor, it has magic defenses or extra powers. And the runic stone is what powers it. This is something new I never heard of. Common armor and weapon recipes up to level 25. Level 25 and under. So you can come and look in a book and see how to make, a, you know, a helmet or a shield, some gauntlets, whatever. How to build a nice axe, things like that. But level 25 and under. Here's another beautiful picture of the library from a lower vantage point. So maybe you're a dwarf and you're only three feet tall. This is what the library looks like to you. Whether that will be the case in the game or if it's just me RPGing, I don't know. But it would be cool if uh, dwarves really did have this shorter view of the world than everybody else. I think it would be really cool. College, level four. At the town stage, Scientific Node's unique building becomes a college. So the library turns into a college at stage four. In addition to the previous abilities that the library offered, the college adds more services including, but not limited to. So at level, when the thing becomes a college, you can do all the same stuff you did at the library, plus more stuff. Like, component identification for non-legendary item destruction. So I think that maybe you'll take this up to the librarian and say, hey, how did this... How did I make this? <laughs> how is this made? And you can deconstruct it and see how is this two-headed battle axe created? Oh, you need two single-headed axes and some wood and maybe some fibrous material for the handle. The component identification will tell you how items, it'll allow you to deconstruct items and see how they were made. This is different than recipes. Uh, certificate of Tier 1 Building Schematics. So at the, at, where are we? At the college, you can get Tier 1 Building Schematics. So in the Kickstarter at Pioneer level, I think, you also get Kickstarter Tier 1 Building Schematics. And this is where you'll be able to use them. You'll be able to use them in a level 4 town. So these are like blueprints that allow you to add um, buildings parts to your freehold, I think. 
So for instance, now maybe you can add a garage or an attic, maybe a nice shrine or a blacksmith shop, something like that. Unique and rare drop information for surrounding areas. So you'll be able to see where people uh, were getting stuff. But the key here is unique and rare drop. It's not common drop like it was at the library. See, gatherable resources. At the library, it's just gatherable resources like papayas or emeralds or whatever. Here, it's unique and rare drop information. That's nice. Concentrated essence for the creation of armor enchantment stones. Armor enchantment stones. So, the stones, armor enchantment stones, are they different than runic power stones? I think enchantment stones are magical and runic power stones are something else. But you'll be able to create the enchantment stones out of essences like, uh, you know, what's the word, oil extracts or whatever? Essential oils, like mint or peppermint or something. Peppermint power shield. Oh, yeah. So, you'll be able to get the essence. Concentrated essences. I think so. Maybe the, instead of like a coffee bar, they'll have a essence shop. Hmm. Runic power stones for weapons. So just like the runic power stones power the armor in the library, now at the college stage, you'll be able to power your weapon. Remember that video that we saw of Steven and his friends uh, attacking that castle and they had all the glowy weapons and you could see them running at night and stuff? The glowy stuff on the weapons is created by runic power stones. Mm -hmm. Common armor and weapon recipes up to level 35. In the library, this was level 25. Here it's level 35, so you get more powerful or higher level stuff. Common glyphs for the creation of accessory enchantment scrolls. So this is another interesting one, enchantment scrolls. These are things that will allow you to do magic and glyphs is another big thing. So imagine a magical piece of parchment that you write on, and depending on what you write on it, whatever you write on it will create a magic spell of some kind. So these are common glyphs that you can write on your enchantment scroll, which will give you common magic, I guess. Here's another view of the library, um, or college, I guess. It's the same building. Hmm. So this looks like it might be another room. Here's a, an upstairs sweeping stairway. These tables are not rectangular, they're circular. You could sit here and uh, study or chat with your friends or whatnot. I wonder if you can actually sit down in these chairs. Here's some more books or folders or parchments or something. These are larger tables. What's this? Oh, that's a chair. I thought it was a wheelchair for a second. I was like, oh, they're handicapped. And that's accessible. I don't know. Okay, at the university level, city stage, let's see what this says. At the city stage, the scientific node's unique building becomes a university. In addition to the previous abilities that the library and college offered, the university adds even more services, including, but not limited to, component identification for legendary item construction, deconstruction. So now you take your legendary item up to the desk and you say, how was this made? And they'll tell you which means you can create legendary items. If you know how it's made, maybe you can create one, which means maybe you can create one. Hmm, that's interesting. It won't be that legendary if you can make your own. 
We're okay. Certification of Tier 2 Building Schematics. If you are a founder level uh, Kickstarter backer, this is where you use your Tier 2 uh, Kickstarter schematic at level 5, the city stage. Everyone will have normal Tier 2 building schematics. You'll have a Kickstarter one, which will look different somehow. Hopefully it's going to be really cool because we still don't know what half of the stuff, half of the Kickstarter stuff looks like. They haven't updated the artwork. However, tomorrow on Thursday, the new forums come out and maybe they're going to update the artwork too. Maybe they'll upgrade the rest of the website, I'm hoping. Concentrated Essences for the Creation of Weapon Enchantment Stones. Two weapon Enchantment Stones. Okay, before it was Armor Enchantment Stones. Now you can also enchant your weapons. Runic Power Stones for Accessories. Before it was Weapons. And before that, it was armor. It's armor, then weapons, then accessories. So what kind of glowy accessories are there? What would an accessory be? Like a shield, maybe? Is that a... or is that armor? Shield is an accessory, I think. I've seen some glowy shields on there. Common armor and weapon recipes, level 45 and under. So it went up from 35 to 45. That's pretty good. Certification of freehold adjacency bonuses for building. Okay, we've talked about this, I think. If you have a sawmill next to your furniture shop, you get a bonus because both of those things are related to woodworking. A sawmill turns trees into wood and then the wood is turned into furniture. But if you have a farm next to a blacksmith shop, those two things are not related, so if you put them next to each other, they don't give you a boost. Well, no, that wouldn't give you a boost. So here, at level 5, the city stage, this is where you get bonuses for uh, having an organized freehold. Common glyphs for the creation of armor and weapon enchantment scrolls. Uh, t -t -t armor and weapon enchantment scrolls. What was it before? Before it was accessories. So, yeah, before it was accessories and now it's armor and weapons. Artisanship mastery qualifications. You can qualify to be an artisan. Like you get a certificate of mastery, like a certificate of accomplishment saying that you have mastered this to the artisanship level so that would be really good if you're some kind of a crafter this would be a very good thing to have because you're not just some ordinary joe off the street now you got some credentials baby <laughs> here we have another look at this common room it looks like there might be more rooms off in here or different kind of scrolls or books or things there's another room over here. This one has a light on. Somebody left the lights on because apparently they don't pay the electric bill. Somebody else does. <laughs> over here, there's tables and more tables. Some ferns. Nice little ferns here. Uh, this statue looks like it has, has an elf's ear. E-L-F. Elf's ear. So this could be elfin. Elvin. Elven architecture. And the person is left handed because they're holding the book in their left hand. Huh. That's interesting. These banners look like fish, but I don't think they're fish. Hmm. Interesting. Some urns. Nice tile work. Okay. Let's move on. At level 6, Metropolis stage. Everybody wants to get here as fast as possible. And I don't. Because I don't want to get destroyed. 
I don't think anybody will ever reach level 6 because people are jerks and they want to kill you. But if there are metropolises, let's see what happens. At the metropolis stage, the scientific knows the unique building becomes the academy. In addition to the previous abilities that the library, college, and university offered, the academy adds a considerable amount of new services, including but not limited to components for legendary item repair. Not only can you make legendary items, you can fix them if they break. So now you're all set. You can make them and break them. And then you can take them and sell them and use them and, hap and be happy. Certificate of Tier 3 Building Schematics. Tier 3, um, whatever is after Founder, that's where you use your Tier 3 Schematics. Uh, this was an expensive one in the Kickstarter. It was over $100 to get here. I uh, don't actually remember what it was. But I do not have this one. I won't be on Tier 3 unless I get to Metropolis stage. Uh, concentrated Essence for the creation of Accessory Enchantment Stones. Okay. Uh, accessory Enchantment Stones. What was it before? Weapons. Weapons. It was weapons before. Common armor and weapon recipes under level 50. So level 50 is interesting by itself. Because it was level 45 before. Right here. It only went up 5 levels. So does that mean things top out at level 50? Or does that mean you can't create anything over that level 50? So if there's a level 70 spear, you have to win it. You have to find it. Somebody has to drop it. You have to take it from somebody. Or does it mean that there's nothing over level 50? Level 50 is the top, and that's the top. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Legendary glyphs for the creation of armor and weapon enchantment scrolls. Here it's armor and weapons. Before it was... What? It's the same? Oh, legendary. That's the keyword right here. Legendary glyphs. See that? Before it was common glyphs, and now it's legendary glyphs. So there's going to be legendary enchantment scrolls. Huh. Professional mastery qualifications. Profession mastery. So once you become an artisan in your craft, you can become a professional. Professional. That's even better. So if you're a crafter, these are what you're going to shoot for. Professional mastery qualifications. Relic and legendary crafting benches. What? Relic and legendary crafting benches. What does that mean? Legendary crafting bench? Is that a thing? Or is, is it a bench where you can craft legendary items? Or is it a legendary crafting bench? Like, is the bench legendary? Or are the things you create on it legendary? And what is a relic? Relic crafting bench. You can create relics? Or is the bench a relic? We'll need more information on this. It's kind of confusing. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. Legendary freehold schematic certificates. This is another confusing one. I can have a legendary freehold? What the heck? Legendary freehold... Is the schematic legendary or is my freehold legendary? Because a f legendary freehold, that must be some kind of a house right there. Dang. It has to be the schematic that's legendary, right? The schematic is super hard to get. Maybe it allows you to build a palace or something. But the freehold itself is just a regular freehold. I have to ask more questions on this. Where's Margaret? Margaret! The unique building plays a central role in the progress of civilization for a server. The above examples are a small insight to the benefits of a scientific node's unique building. 
We don't want to give away all our secrets and would rather leave the discovery to our players. Well, we will be discovering them, that's for sure. Look at this person right here. Does that look like a what? Blech. Does that look like a guy in a trench coat in a hat just being all sneaky up there? Where's my magnifying glass? How do I zoom in on this thing? Can't zoom in on it. Can I? No. That looks like somebody's sitting there being all sneaky and stuff. Hey, sneaky man. What's up? That's a smoky man from X-Files. Smoking up there. No smoking in here, sir. There's no smoking. The entire library is no smoking area. You'll have to leave, sir. Superpower. Each node type has a superpower granted to the node. These abilities become unlocked when the node reaches level 6. They are intended to change the dynamics of the game significantly. And boy do they, because I already read this part. Scientific superpower teleportation. <laughs> Scientific nodes that have reached the metropolis stage unlock the superpower teleportation. I'm going to read it really fast because there's a lot of words here. Citizens of the Metropolis stage. Citizens of the, the Metropolis Scientific Node can teleport between the Metropolis Node and any nodes that are currently vassals of that Metropolis, regardless of their node stage, so long as the vassal node is not at war. Citizens of vassal nodes may teleport to the Metropolis and back to their vassal node as well. If there are multiple scientific metropolises, then an airship will provide faster travel between these scientific metropolises for citizens of the nodes and their vassal nodes and their vassal citizens. If two scientific metropolises were at war, then the airship would shut down. <sighs> okay, what that means is you'll be able to teleport anywhere from the metropolis to all of its vassal nodes and from the vassal nodes to the metropolis. You won't be able to teleport from one metropolis to another because they're in different zones of influence. To go from one metropolis to another, you'll have to take an airship. And airships are confirmed. I love airships. I love them. I love them. Let me turn on the light. There you go. This will allow citizens and vassals of scientific metropolises to do things more quickly than others. As fast travel is limited in the world of Ashes of Creation, they'll be able to exchange goods and information with ease and get to locations in the world at a quicker speed in order to gather crafting materials to create recipes as well as participate in limited time events. So, let's say there's a gigantic spider that only appears at 12 noon and he's only around for 5 minutes. You better teleport over there and fight that giant spider as fast as you can. Here's another beautiful screenshot of a different room. The doors, there's no doors here. It's just open enrollment, I guess. Just come on in. This looks like a sofa. Some nice tables here. I wonder who sweeps this place, who cleans this up? Nice and orderly. Each node type in the world of Vera has its own unique benefits. And it will be up to you, the player, to decide which will grow into large cities and which will never advance beyond an expedition. You'll unlock new stories, services, items, and quests, and the world around you will be ever-changing as your actions take place. In the next Know Your Nodes article, we'll be covering the economic node type, so be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook in order to get the most up-to-date information on Ashes of Creation. You should also follow me on the YouTube by subscribing because I'll be covering all the node types as well. For economic node, I, I predict banks, uh, maybe credit unions and the stock market. What else? ATMs? No, not ATMs. That would be interesting though. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you for watching a lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, I guess I love you. 
I didn't want to say I love you till I had a thousand subscribers, but if you watched an entire 40 minute video, okay, thanks. I love you. Okay, so this has been my coverage of the scientific node. It was a lot more fun and more exciting the first time I did it. Thank you very much, YouTube, for deleting everything I did. And uh, tomorrow, in other news, tomorrow is the forums. The forums are back. Woohoo! So I might have an episode about the forums and how cool the forums are. That might be my next video, my next video. Thank you. Thanks for watching.